you everyone for joining this talk. So before I start, you would see me navigating because I have two screens in front of me. So, um, so in this talk, we will be discussing how to unleash the power of non-traditional data using natural language processing. And in today's agenda, we're going to talk about 10 points. First of all, we will define what is big data, the five Vs of big data. We're going to be discussing Google Cloud's BigQuery service, GDALT and natural language processing, sentiment analysis, and then we're going to tackle public perception. After that, we're going to talk about big data and its effect on public policies. And finally, I'll be giving two demos, one of which would include uh, Google's BigQuery, and the other would be a Python notebook showing you some cool data analytics you could do with um, non-traditional data. OK. So we all read or come across online news reports on a daily basis, but have you ever wondered how many people browse for news and how many news articles are released per day? Well, in fact, about 300 million internet users go online for news each day. Also, about 60.8 million people read a blog each day. Some of the most popular are news related. And speaking in terms of data, there are 2.5 quintillion bytes of news data that is generated each and every day. We can see that these numbers are quite tremendous. That is a lot for our minds to even process, isn't it? So in fact, this amount of data is quite a lot for traditional computing systems to handle. And thus, we term this kind of data to be big data. And a famous data platform for storing and querying such is Google Cloud's BigQuery. BigQuery is a managed data warehouse that helps you analyze your data with built-in features like machine learning, geospatial analysis, and business intelligence. It's actually scalable, and it lets you query terabytes in seconds and even petabytes in minutes. So now, after talking about the storage, how would we actually classify any data to be big data? This is only possible with the concept of the five Vs. I will explain this with an example from a news reports data set. So the first V would correspond to volume. So as we know, a massive amount of report data is generated every day, which makes this a volumes data. The second V is velocity. So news reports are generated at a very high speed with like almost more than 100 reports generated online every second. And also the third would be variety. News reports data are various in their types. They could, they could be structured or they could be unstructured. So we have this variety. And then we have veracity, which means like, can we trust this data? And in fact, some official news report websites are actually trustworthy, so yes. And then we can discuss value. So how would this data add value to society? So the inspection of news report data could actually aid in social decisions, such as public policy making which makes it fit under all the five Vs. And then we could say that news report data is actually big data. And for more clarity, I will give an example of a big data platform that we will use in our demo today, which is GDOT. The GDOT project monitors the world's broadcast print. Oops, sorry about that. It monitors the world's broadcast and prints from nearly every corner of every country in over 100 languages. This means that through this platform, we can download any number of news reports from actually anywhere in the world. And GDAL does not only allow you to download the content of a news report, it does much more. So with the help of natural language processing or NLP, GDAL can identify key features in news reports. For example, if I get a certain news report from GDAL, it could tell me what are or who are the two main actors in this report which means actor one, as it's said here in the tree, is the entity that is inflicting the action, and actor two is the entity who is receiving an action. It could also identify the date of a certain action, the type, the location. Um, so if we can imagine, this is massive, massive amounts of data that is being transformed from an unstructured form to a structured form. So when we come to think about it, GDOT has actually allowed us a free open platform for computing on the entire world. So to exemplify this, I'm going to show this sample. So this is a sample from a news report I got from GDOT, which has an excerpt that says, the United Nations will provide nearly 25,000 tons of emergency food aid to refugees fleeing the civil war in Liberia, the World Food Program said on Monday. So when GDOT 
or the when the NLP algorithms that are embedded in GDAL to recognize this sentence, they would label the United Nations as actor one, which is the entity that is inflicting the action, and it would label refugees fleeing the civil war in Liberia as actor two. And the action here would be providing food aid. And since GDAL offers filtering services, you could actually filter these parameters when you want to download data. So for example, you could specify who do you want to be actor one and who do you want to be actor two, which makes it very and highly flexible, which allows numerous options for data analysis in this case. So now we want to ask ourselves, what can we actually accomplish with GDELT and natural language processing? So I would first like to discuss sentiment analysis. And an important thing to note is actually GDELT, in addition to all these interesting features that we saw, it provides a feature that is called a sentiment. So what is a sentiment? Sentiment derives from sentiment analysis or it's opinion mining. It's a natural language processing technique used to determine whether data is either positive, negative, or neutral. So to explain this further, let us look at this example. So if we're looking at a set of tweets, let's say, and we come across a tweet that says, I hate AI. So an NLP model, which would be, which is embodied as a neural network in this case, would label this sentence as a negative because it has words that are negatively strong such as hate but however when we want to look at a tweet that says great visualizations thank you lucas this machine learning model would view this as a positive term why because it has some positive uh, words like great and thanks so imagine if we could do this to news reports and then we could analyze the overall tone or sentiment from these reports that we could use in our analysis as well and this is what we will be doing or showing in the demo in a bit. And also now we want to ask the question, is big data and NLP causing a transformational shift in governments after all this data that we just saw? So first I would like to discuss the concept of public perception here. So public perception broadly refers to people's opinions or preferences around a certain topic. And when we understand the public perception through studying the sentiment of news reports on certain topics, we would be making an essential action towards policy making processes. So examining these public opinions is a very strong point that is in fact really beneficial for governments all around the world. And let's talk about this in a more specific manner. So incorporating big data and the NLP methodologies that we just discussed will aid governments in three core areas. The first core area is policy research and evaluation in which we would enable new business and new business and performance models. We would also be able to have an improved policy analysis. The second field would be agenda setting and policy formulation, which we would, be, which would the government would gain accountability and trust from the people, would increase accuracy, efficiency, and speed. And also, if we want to discuss uh, the third area, which is policy implementation, we would see that using these techniques would cost better service and decision making, in addition to cost saving and productivity gains as well. So uh, after giving this brief introduction, uh, now I think it's time to switch to the demo. So I'll just give an overview before I go to the demo. So what we will be doing is that I will show you how to download GDAL data from Google Cloud's BigQuery. And after that, we're gonna get this data, look at it in Python, analyze it and pre-process it, generate some plots and deduce some key findings. Just give me a moment to switch my screens. Okay. Okay, so I could share this link um, via Slack when we're done if anyone's interested. But if you have an account on Google Cloud Platform and you already have a project there, you could go and navigate to Google Cloud's BigQuery tab, which is this, this one. And in Google Cloud's BigQuery, you would have access to the GDAL dataset because the GDAL dataset is actually embedded in this part of Google's BigQuery. 
So it's very easy to download. First, I'll give you like an overview of the data. Here we could see that we have the features, which are like the month, the year, the actor one that we talked about, the actor one's country, the actions location, actor two. So we have like numerous more fields than I just discussed uh, that you could play around and filter from. And something that's really interesting in Google's BigQuery is that it allows you to write queries in SQL. I don't know if everyone here is familiar with SQL, but it's a very easy querying language. So it's very flexible. You could filter throughout all the features. For example, here I prepared the query where I selected from this data set all the news reports that were published um, from year 2014 and forward. And I also did something that is uh, really interesting in this case, which is like I filtered the actors to just belong to international or governmental organizations. In this case, we're talking like the UN and its agencies like UNICEF, UNDP, and also like, for example, like the EU. Um, so here you could filter whatever types of agencies you would uh, want to collect news reports about. So after you write your query, you could simply press run and then the data will process. Well, here it says like this query will process 251 gigabytes. So of course we won't run it now, but I did run it before and I got the data and I will be showing it to you in a bit. So yeah, this is all about Google Cloud's BigQuery and how to obtain GDOT. And as I said, I could share the links to this as well and the, and the sample queries that uh, you would want to use. And also, now that I have the data, I want to study it and I want to analyze it. And what's the best way to do so, to do so is through like a programming language. And for today, I'm going to be using Python. So uh, what I use for Python is that I use Jupyter Notebooks. I'm sure some of you are familiar with this, but if you're not, it's very easy to use. You could simply download uh, something called Anaconda. And through Anaconda, you could download Jupyter Notebook. I could also link you through Slack of, to all the steps that are required for this um, for this process. So uh, here is my Jupyter notebook that I will be using to analyze my data. So first of all, I imported I imported some libraries. I think maybe some of you are familiar with pandas, numpy, matplotlib. Um, these libraries are crucial when you want to deal with uh, data of any sort. So here I'm reading the data. Let me show you just an example of how the data actually looks like in an Excel form, just to give you a better overview. Sorry about my screen, one sec. Okay. So this is an example of the data here. Like we could see that we have different features that we talked about, like the date, month, year, the actor names, like for example, here we could see the World Bank, the EU, the UN, because we specified the actors to be uh, international or organizations. So yes. And here we could also see separate metrics like actor codes that we're going to talk about in a bit. We could also see, I want to show you the locations of countries. Yeah. Um, like where they where they're at, the actors. We could also see actor locations, etc. So I just wanted to give you like an overview of how it looks like in Excel in specific. Now let's go back to our Jupyter notebook here. Okay, so here I'm just exploring the columns that I just showed you, and here I'm just doing some simple data cleaning exploration where I'm checking if I have any null values. Like as you can see, I put is in a. And here, I just want to study the languages. So as you know, GDOT scrapes uh, reports from all languages across the world. So I wanted to see the variation of languages that I have. So to do so, I went to the column called language and I did something called value counts, which counts the, the appearance of each language. And then I plotted it through a simple pie chart in Python. And I would see, and here I Thank you. 
Um, Jasmine, can you please wait a bit because I can see your screen, uh, it's moving, but I cannot uh, hear you. Uh, I guess it's like uh, um, issue uh, regarding your connection. So can you try to um, check your connection, please? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Oops, I'm sorry, I had to turn off my camera. Maybe no, uh, yeah. the connection was weak. Yes, probably. No worries, I can hear you now, so you can go ahead. Okay, well, do you want me to repeat from the start? I didn't know where my voice cut yes, off. Yes, please, yes. Thank you. Okay, so, so when I shared my screen, uh, you couldn't hear me at all, so I'll start from the beginning. Uh, yeah, from there, I think uh, it should be fine from there, from there. Okay, so sorry about that. I think my connection wasn't stable, so I had to turn off my camera. Okay, so I'll just uh, repeat what I said briefly. So basically, as I showed you the Excel data of our GDOT data set, and now uh, we will be exploring certain features. So first of all, I'll be showing the columns, which are apparent in the Excel sheet, like the actor names, the action, the countries, etc. And here now I'm just exploring if we have any missing data, uh, just so to keep this in mind. And here I want to study the available languages that the reports have, because reports are not only collected in English, they could be collected in any language across the world. So there's simply a column which is called language. And there's a function in Python called value counts. You just add it to, um, to like count the incidence of certain languages. So here we could see that English is the majority with like a 90%, but we have others like Arabic, Russian, etc. And to plot this, I have used matplotlib's um, plot functions, which are quite straightforward and easy to use. And also, in addition to that, I thought it would be interesting to show the most common words in the articles. And to do so, we have to look at the content of the articles. So we have to loop over the words, check which words are the most repeated. So this is basically the code that does this. I'm looping over the content, and then I'm appending the word with its count, like with, with how many times it has appeared. And then when we have all the words with their reoccurrences, now we could simply plot the top 40 words, let's say, or top 20 words. And it's interesting to see that some of the top words are support, governments, uh, security. So I also did the word cloud here to, to show it in a better way. And I also used Python's matplotlib word, word cloud uh, method here too. So this is also interesting to observe. And now let's look at like the percentage of articles and how are they distributed across the years. So we could see that from the year 2014 to the year 2020, the number of reports have definitely uh, increased over time. Let's say, for example, in 2014, they were merely non-existent. And like to plot this distribution, uh, simply we have a column that's called here, and we use matplotlib's um, plotting function to plot this bar graph. And you could like observe the number of reports through time. And now let us like explore who the actors were. Like, what did GDOT tell us? Who are the main actors that appeared in the news reports when talking about international and global organizations? So we could see that the EU and the UN are the top two. And then we have, let's say, UNHCR, European Commission, UNICEF, and much more organizations. And also to envision this better, I decided to plot it using also Matplotlib's bar plot. And here we could see the variation that we just talked about. Same thing that could be done with actor two, who is the actor that receives the action. So this is also a bar chart like before. We could see that the EU, EU and the UN are the top two as well, with the European Commission and the World Health Organization coming in third and fourth place. And what we could also see is the actor's location. 
So there is a metric called actor one geographic phone name. And we noticed that the top two locations are the United States and the United Kingdom. And third, we also have Libya. We have also Brussels and Russia. So we could also plot this variation as well. Here you could see it through the bar plot too. And we could do the same for actor two. We could see that the top two countries here are USA and Russia, in addition to UK and Syria as well, and Germany. So what I meant to show from this analysis is that if you have the full flexibility to filter the actors uh, from the GDEL data set, so you could simply filter the actors, see uh, the variation that you have, see in which location they are most residing that is being talked about in the global media. So that would be very beneficial in some projects. And also we could explore the action locations like we've previously explored the actors and now what is the action that these actors did? We could also see where they did it. So same thing, we also notice like the same locations, USA being the top one, UK, Libya as well. We also have Jerusalem and Russia in the top list as well. And what you could also do is you could also study the type of events that were taking place in this report. So GDELT uses some coding uh, methodology to point to events. So for example, if we let's look at the plot here, which is easier. We notice when we plot the type of events, we see that event of number 20 and 51 are the top, which refer to praising and endorsing or the use of unconventional mass violence. So through GDOT, you would be able to analyze the type of actions that are taking place. And now we come to an important point, which is the public, per, the public perception or the sentiment that we uh, talked about in a bit, uh, quite uh, in the presentation, I mean. So it's really interesting to see as well. So here we compare like the average sentiment across time. And we notice that uh, when we when we are in the year 2014, the sentiment was really low, like public perception was portrayed in a very negative way. However, it improved across time, uh, reaching to a peak maybe in 2019, where the public uh, were somehow positive about uh, reports concerning international and global organizations, but then it dripped, maybe due COVID, because everything was portrayed in a negative way. So... It's nice to see such trends when you have when you are in control of the type of actors you want to to study, and also here I, uh, I showed that you could zoom uh, much closer. So here it's basically per month you could observe the public perception. So each graph uh, pertains to a certain month of the year. So um, this is also interesting if you want to take a closer look. And. One final thing that I would want to show you is a network of actors. So you could create a network using Python's uh, NX library in which you could show which actors talk which each, with each other the most through the global media, which is portrayed here. This is the plot that is generated. So here we could see, for example, the EU is in most contact with the World Health Organization, with the UNSCE, with UNICEF. And you could see like the whole chain of actors that a certain uh, body like talks to or operates with in the global media. So this is GDELT in a nutshell. And I'm done. Thank you.